Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we will unlock the book Designing Design. Elements of design influence every aspect of our lives. Design is an intimate part of everyone's day-to-day -day life. For example, right now, while you listen to this bookie whether you're using a phone or a computer, whether your device is connected to a speaker and you are sharing it with others, or you're listening to it on headphones, every gadget you're using is the product of design. In everyday life, we have long since ceased to be satisfied with basic functionality, instead we are accustomed to choosing well-designed and items that suit our individual requirements. Omnipresent, we are surrounded by design. In everything we do, while we work, communicate, entertain, and in many other activities, design is involved although we may not be conscious of its effect. By contrast, when we are design aware we complain about awkward unfunctional design and we visit exhibitions to appreciate high quality design. The best often wins our hearts. While you're loving the convenience that design brings to your life, do you ever think about what makes a good design? When a design aesthetic awakens your senses with a novel experience, do you ever question how far design can go? Designing design addresses these questions. Whether you are a designer, an enthusiast, or just curious, this is a book filled with the insight of a design master alongside excellent examples of Japanese design. The book's author Kenya Hara is a master of graphic design in a style typically associated with Japanese aesthetics. His roles include representative at Nippon Design Center, professor at the Musashino Art University, and art director at Muji. Examples of his design are the leaflets and programs for the opening and closing ceremonies of the Nagano Winter Olympic Games, pamphlets and posters for the 2005 World Exposition in Aichi, and the Regeneration Project of Mitsuya Ginza. Not only is he skilled in constructing multi-sensory visual design experiences, but also he has gained international renown for his unique research insights in design theory. Hara has won international acclaim for both design and writing. Next, let's track Hara's concepts, understanding, appreciating, and sensing his design aesthetics through three stages. Part 1. What is design? Part 2. What is designing design? Part 3. Japanese design style. First, let's probe what design is. Design originated as soon as our ancient ancestors rose from all fours and started walking upright. Standing freed their hands. It allowed humans to use tools, to become more powerful, and maintain an edge over other animals. The first humans used two kinds of tools, sticks and vessels. Sticks are straightforward, but what were the vessels? Rather than bringing their mouths to the water as other animals do, the early humans scooped up water in their hands and brought it to their mouths. Already, their hands served as vessels. Sticks could amplify physical strength. They gradually evolved into many other types of tools that gradually transformed human life on Earth. On the other hand, vessels developed into a variety of boxes, bottles, cans, pots, cabinets, and so on. Beyond these basic items, devices for storing knowledge developed, such as books and disk drives. With the emergence of different classes in human society, designs were endowed with a new function, decoration. Embellishment could display authority or power. For example, the surfaces of Chinese bronze were often covered in complex and delicate patterns. Taking advantage of the sense of awe humans experience when they see intricate designs, the ruling classes conceived of a way to influence social cohesion. Through the power of design and decoration, they maintained the unity of tribe and nation. As well as in China, we can see the state's authority and power represented in delicate and complicated patterns in the Islamic cultures of the Middle East and across Europe. The mechanized production of the Industrial Revolution introduced machines that imitated the appearance of handmade goods. These were produced in vast quantities and at speeds that traditional craftspeople could not have imagined. It caused unprecedented damage to traditional crafts. People began to worry about the degradation of craft aesthetics. For example, 